Good morning. Come on in the room. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, everybody. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing this morning? Everybody's good. Hopefully everybody had a great night. And you're looking forward to another day. Let me turn my ringer off. Make sure we're all set here this morning. I did not get a chance to do very much today. I just walked in the classroom. It is very foggy outside this morning, like super foggy. And um, so I kind of had to take my time this morning. Also had someone call me this morning and I had to um, go into prayer and intercede. So we're running a little bit behind today, but that's all right because we're still here. And we're ready to do what God has called us to do. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for who you are. And we just give you praise this morning. Hallelujah. God, we honor you on today. And we lift you up. Glory to God. We lift you up, Father. We lift you up. We love you, God. And we thank you. We just thank you for being so very good to us. We thank you ah, that even in spite of it all, you are a good, good father. And we love you. We honor you. We bless your name this morning. For you alone are worthy to be praised. Glory to God. God, I pray, Father God, for uh, this live one today, God, that you would speak to me. Speak through me, Holy Spirit. I pray that uh, I would clearly hear your voice. I pray, Father God, that you would give us a word on today that will not only um, ignite our hearts, God, but that will move us to action. I pray, Father God, that you would bless every person that, that watches this video, Father, that you would minister to them right where they are. I pray, Father God, that you would... Um, deliver the word that they need to hear through me. I yield my vocal cords to you, God, to be used, oh God, to minister right at the point of their need. Mm -hmm. Yes, God, I thank you. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight, Father. I pray that we'll be able to see it from your perspective, hear your voice and your voice only, and then we'll have a heart to walk it out in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, fam. What's up, y'all? Your girl ain't got nothing to drink. I got nothing. I got a bottle of water over here. Just all I got. Didn't have time to make no tea. Didn't have... We here. We done made it in here. So what you drinking? Where are you this morning? What's your location? What you drinking? What you eating? What you got going on this morning? You're taking the kids to school? Where are you? Drop it in the chat for me. Tag a friend. Share this on your page. Remember, I am asking, I'm asking you guys to please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jacina Speaks. 
I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, I have 150 subscribers about that. And I need uh, 900 and, uh, well, 850 more to reach my first goal. Amen. So I'm asking, soliciting your help. Also, if you are not busy this Saturday, I need, hey, Javon. Hey, nephew. Have an amazing day at school. Um, if you are in the Orlando area this weekend and you don't have anything to do, I know that's right, Amanda. I'm asking that you go ahead and sign up for the gathering. Sign up for the gathering. That is our monthly event that we have where we get together, men and women. We get together um, every second Saturday of the month from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And we talk. We have real conversations just like we do right here on the Morning Manor. We have real, authentic raw, relevant conversations about life. That can mean love. That can mean faith. That can mean relationships. It could, it, we talk. So I'm personally, I'm inviting you personally to come. The registration link, my daughter, I make sure she puts it in the chat. You can check my page. Uh, it's also on my homepage. Um, I hope you can come out. It's a free event. Somebody say free. It's free, it's free, it's free. All right, it's free. I promise you, you'll be blessed. This week, uh, it's dress casual. You wear jeans and a tee. You wear some flip-flops, sundress. Hey, we wearing camo this week. If you got a little camo, throw a little camo in there, okay? All right, let's go. Yesterday, we talked about being prepared for war when you are going through a spiritual battle, when there is spiritual warfare. And I'm telling you, God is so good. He's so, 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 so good. Um, he, he allowed me, um, in my study time last night, I, um, I found one of the Bibles that I, I used to study. And it's the study Bible um, from Dr. David Jeremiah, who is one uh, of the greats. He's an amazing man of God. And um, I listen to him often. And um, I happened to be reading my, my word last night. And boom, came across spiritual warfare. I was like, are you talking to us or what? Listen, I, I, I need I, I want to encourage you real quick before we get before we get started in this conversation. You are an overcomer. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what's happened. I don't care what you've gone through. You win. The back of the book tells us you win. You are victorious. You will make it through this. The Holy Spirit had me had me post something like this. Listen, I didn't bring you this far to leave you. I didn't I didn't I didn't bring you this far to leave you. You're going to be fine. It may not feel fine, but it's going to be fine. I'm telling you. You listen, we are going to have to really really control our tongue. You're going to have to be in control of your thoughts. You're going to have to be in control of your mouth and you're going to be, you're going to have to really be intentional. That was the word that the Lord gave me this year. Intentional. Jacina, I need you to be intentional about your relationship with me. I need you to be intentional about what you do, how you live. I need you to be intentional about it because when you are intentional about him, listen, he's even more intentional about you. We cannot say that we are Christians, yet we live like the world. That is contradictory. We have, listen, the Bible says that in order for us to see the promises of God, we have to do what? We have to make sure that we are living according to the word. So if you're not living according to the word of God, 
how and why are we expecting the promises of God to, to manifest in our lives? So there are some areas that we got to get right. When, when I was thinking about this last night, I was saying some, some spiritual warfare uh, that we, we, we find ourselves in, we had nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. You just found yourself in a spiritual fight. This is what I keep hearing the Holy Spirit say. Your mindset, your perspective is going to determine whether you win this fight or not. This right here. What are your thoughts? What are you thinking? Not only what are your thoughts and what are you thinking, but what are you saying while you're in the fight? I don't know why he wants me to go there, but he's telling me to go there. Let's see. Um, David and Goliath. We talked about David and Goliath yesterday. He's saying, go back. <sighs> Come on, let's see. First Samuel 17. All right, let's go. First Samuel 17. All right, let's see. First Samuel. 17. Okay, here we go. Come on, let's go. First Samuel 17. Can somebody drop that in the chat for me? I don't see my second daughter. Shari, can you drop that in the chat? All right, so here we have the story of David and Goliath, right? The giant Goliath from Gath had come to challenge the Israelites. So these Israelites always had themselves up in something. <laughs> he was somewhere between eight and nearly 10 feet tall. And he was strong. He may have weighed 400 pounds or more. For it would take a very large person to wear a hel helmet of brass and a coat of mail that weighed somewhere between 150 and 200 pounds, right? The spear in Goliath's hand looked like the beam of a weaver's shuttle. About two to three inches in diameter and six feet long. The tip of Goliath's spear, just the tip of it, weighed between 15 and 20 pounds. That was the size of the challenge facing David. Mm-hmm. I hear you. Mm-hmm. Listen. It says here, this is not just a story about a young man fighting a much larger enemy. It depicts the conflict of the ages. It is a story about the battle that has been raging ever since Satan rebelled against God. So this was a confrontation between good and evil, God and his enemy. That's how you can also look at this, at, at this story of David and Goliath. What else you want me to say to... to, to... Mm -hmm. Notice that Goliath was fully armed in spite of his massive size. Hear that. Even though Goliath was big, he was still armed. Oh, got to stop right there. Did you hear what I just said? Goliath was big. He weighed about 400 pounds or more. He was tall. He was strong. Even though he was big and pay attention. Even though he was tall, strong, big, he still had on his I see where you're going. I see where you go. I'm I'm trying to stay calm because I have to be off today by 8 30. So I, I'm I'm trying to stay calm. He was still he, he, calm down. Y'all help me. Y'all help me today. 
Even though Goliath was fully armed, in spite of his massive size, he even had a shield bearer who went before him. This is what I just heard from that. It doesn't matter how big you think you are in the spirit. You still need to make sure that every day that you wake up, that you are intentional about putting on the full armor of God. Because although the enemy, he is big. He carries weapons. He carries weapons to use against you and I. He does not come to play. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. This is why you and I cannot walk out of the house without our armor. You cannot walk out of the house without your armor. You cannot walk out of the house without being prayed up. You cannot, listen, you cannot be so caught up in life that you do not take the time to pray, that you do not take the time to read the word. This is, listen, again, he's tying it all together. You have got to meditate on the word day and night. That doesn't mean that you're sitting here reading you know, scripture after scripture, chapter after chapter after chapter after chapter. You're going to have to get you a piece of the word and meditate on it day and night. That's what he's been teaching me. Stop overwhelming yourself. You're not in a contest. You're not in a competition. This is not, oh, I read, you know, three chapters today, so I feel wonderful. It doesn't matter if you read three chapters a day, if you're not applying what you've heard, if you're not able to meditate on it, if you're not able to mutter it, if you're not able to get it in your spirit and then do something with it, apply it to your life in some type of way. You just read three chapters. You ever been in school before? My students do it all the time. I'll give them, give them an assignment and I'll say, read this. They'll read the, the story. They'll read the article. And I'll say, okay, what, 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 what did you learn? What did you take away from it? This, this, is my, this is my number one question I ask them. What's the main idea? What was the author's purpose? What was the purpose that the author wrote the article? What is it that he's trying to say to the reader? Listen, you got to do that same kind of stuff when you read the word. You got to ask yourself, what is the purpose of this text? Why did God see that it was needful for this to be in the word? Why is this in the Bible? What does this say to me? What does this mean to me? You, listen, we have got to slow down. The world is opened up. Listen, we slowed down some of us because everybody didn't. Some of us, we were we were uh, locked down, but there was but we weren't locked up. Some of us, when the pandemic hit and we had to go on lockdown, there were only a handful that pressed in. There were others that were still living, still acting, still doing that same foolishness they were doing before. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, Goliath, not only was he fully armored, fully armed, he, 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 had, he had on his war clothes. He also had a shield. Now, he knew he was bigger than everybody that was around him, but yet he still came prepared. Are you prepared? Because sometimes we think, you know, I pray, I, you know, I'm, I, I, in a, you know, I'm praying, I'm, you know, I'm reading my word. I'm, but are you, 
fully armed. What does fully armed mean, Jay? What do you mean? Do you have your weapons with you? Do you walk around with the belt of truth? So when the enemy comes with a lie, you can denounce it. You can pull that thing down. Listen, we talked about this yesterday. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. The enemy is real. His whole assignment, let me tell you what the, the enemy's whole assignment is to study and to watch you. And what he's doing is he's waiting for you to give him some type of entryway. And you know how we give the enemy an entry? It's not, it's, it's really not about what we think. It's about what comes out of your mouth. What is your mouth saying? Because your mouth is going to speak one of two things. Your mouth is going to speak what you've been thinking about or what's in your heart. Because the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What are you speaking? What are you saying? I want to get to that part. Come on, go with me. Let's see. So it says, I'm at. All right, let's start at 12. Here we go. Now, David was the son of that Urathite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, and who had eight sons. And the man was old, advanced in years, in the days of Saul. The three oldest sons of Jesse had gone to follow Saul to the battle. The names of his three sons who went to the battle were Elab, the firstborn, next to him, Abnadab, Abnadab, and the third, Shama. And you know these Bible names, but we're going to work it. David was the youngest, and the three oldest followed Saul. But David occasionally went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near and presented himself 40 days, morning and evening. Then Jesse said to his son David, Take now for your brothers an ephah of this dried grain and these ten loaves, and run to your brothers at the camp, and carry these ten cheeses to the captain of their thousand, and see how your brothers fare, and bring back news of them. So he sent David to go out there uh, to the battle to take his brothers some food, and, this, and, and to report back to his daddy, how, how were they? Were they okay? What was going on? Right? Saul and they all... Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. So David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper and took the things and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the camp as the army was going out to the fight and shot him for the battle. For Israel and the Philist Philistines had drawn up in the battle array army against army. And David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army and came and greeted his brothers. Then as he talked with them, there was a champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines. All right, stay with me. And he spoke according to the same words. So David heard them. And all of the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him. So those that went to battle, they fled when Goliath came out. What is happening? Listen, this is why you got to be careful, honey. David went to the battle. Because his brothers were supposed to be going to help Saul fight. When he gets to the battle, the men flee when Goliath come. Stay with me. They flee. They, Goliath shows up. They flee. They are afraid. They are not ready for this fight. Even though they showed up at the Shashi God. Even though she remember, Come on. Come on. Even though they showed up for the fight they were not ready to fight point number one you better make sure that when you show up 
to the, the fight, when you show up for warfare, with, listen, you got to make sure that you are ready to fight. You can't be running from the fight. You know why they ran from the fight? Because they were not prepared. See, God talked to us a little bit about this on yesterday. David was prepared for this stuff. Why they probably was laughing at David? Because David was over there, you know, with the sheep. David was out there in the field with the little sheep. That's what they gave the babies. That's what they used to do to the babies. They give us the little mini jobs that nobody else don't want. David is out there with the sheep. But see, while David was out there with the sheep, David was handling some business. What was his business? God had him in a season of preparation. I want to say this to somebody prophetically this morning because I hear it, hear it and I don't have time to play today. I don't have time to play with you today. Let me tell you something. You are in a season of preparation. And the reason that you are in this season, listen, do not despise this season. Do not despise the fact that you see everybody else. They are over here winning. It looks like they, it looks like they just doing their thing. They get to go to, they get to go to battle. They get to go do this. They get to go through that. Why do they get to do that? And I got to be over here. Listen, and David was by himself. David was over there isolated. By, where is it, God, where he where he was, uh, was fighting them things? Wait, wait, where was it? Where was it? Mm -hmm. I need somebody to help me find that. Help me find, so I don't have to look for it. Help me find where David killed these different animals. Let me tell you something. You are in a season of preparation. Many times we despise this season. We don't like it. It was in this season that David became who he was. Do you not understand that the season that you're in, you may have to fight some bears. You, you, you may have to, you're going to have to fight some things in this season. <sighs> So when you get to the next season, you are not afraid of the thing. Listen, you're not going to back down. You're not going to back up. You're not going to bend. You're not going to break. You're not going to bow. When you see a Goliath coming, you will already be prepared. Listen, you will look Goliath in the face and you're going to tell him the exact same thing that David told him. I'm not afraid of you. Who are you? Child, let's read it because I, I like this part of the story. Let's read it. Trying not to, I'm trying, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to stay calm. That's what I'm trying to do. <clears throat> so I'm in verse, I'm at the, I'm at verse 24. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and they were dreadfully afraid. Zanin says it's first Samuel. Let me write that down in case it go. First Samuel 1731. Thank you, Z. I, we, we're coming back to that. Listen, <clears throat> 20, 25. So the men of Israel said, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches. Mm -hmm. Will give him his daughter and give him his father's house exemption from taxes in Israel. Then David spoke up. Now David heard this. David's watching them run. From this big giant that came on the scene. David is looking like, well, what's going on? And somebody said the men of Israel started saying, well, that's Goliath. And anybody that defeats Goliath, these are the things that, they go, that they're going to get. Do you know that the father tells us the same things? You know he tells us the same thing? You're going to have some Goliaths in your life. But if you will stand firm. If, listen, if you, listen, when you show up for the battle, if you come prepared, you got on your breastplate, you got your shoes of preparation, your shoes of peace on, you got your shield of faith. Listen, you come, you got your helmet of seven, you come fully armored. You done spent time in my presence. You're not, you're living right. You're talking right. You're, you're doing, you're doing your best to stay connected to me. You're not out here doing all of this stuff that you used to do. When you come to the fight prepared, you're going to be able to look at Goliath. You're going to be able to look at the giant and you will not fear him. You know, I said, mm -hmm, I hear you. 
You know why many of us see Goliath and we are afraid? You know why many of us, when we are in spiritual warfare, you know why we are afraid? Because we are not prepared. So when we see the giant, we're we're just like you were just like the um the 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 the, the guys that the ten the ten spies that went over. Who was that told the ten spies to go and look? Was it Moses said, go over there and look at that land? And they were like, oh God, it's some big giants over there. They too big. Oh, we can't go. We can't go. We can't go over there. We can't go. Oh no, we can't go over there. It's too. It's it's giants over there. They are huge. We cannot defeat them. Joshua and Caleb went over there and said, we could take them. We got it. You know why they were able to go over there and see a. See, first of all, they had a different perspective. You know why I believe Joshua and Caleb had a different perspective than the other, other spies that went over there to look? It is because they had a different kind of relationship with God. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'm trying to stay calm, but you know what? You, you, you just, we're going to have to just give it to you the way it's coming. We have time for this today. Baby, you... We don't have time to be playing church no more. You don't have time to be play reading the Bible. You don't have time to be, you know, reading a little devotional and thinking that's what's going to help you. You're going to have to know the word for yourself in this season. You're going to have to know who God is for yourself. You're going to listen. You cannot just listen to the preacher preach no more. You're going to have to know what the word of God says to you about that situation for your life. You, 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 you're not going to be able to do that no more. Because you need to have your own perspective of who God is. Them boys was able to go, them boys was able to look like David and say, you know what? We can conquer this. We have no problem conquering this. Why were they able to say that? Because they had a different perspective. Why? Because they had been in the presence of God. Because they had a relationship with him. Those that this is why you can't be talking to anybody about your situation. If you got a situation and you know you're in a spiritual fight, you know you're going through a spiritual battle, you know it's spiritual warfare. You cannot call anybody. You cannot be connected with anybody when you are in a fight. Because their perspective, the way they see that thing, that back rub off on you. And if they are afraid, they're going to start talking crazy, acting crazy. And guess what you're going to do? You're going to do the same. This is why you got to be surrounded by people that know the Lord. I'm not talking about they act like they know him. They know him. Because you're going to need somebody that's going to say, oh, no, we can, we can, we can come. Listen, oh, no, you may be going through this, but I declare and decree. Oh, no, you may be experiencing that, but let me tell you something. This too shall pass. Oh, no, I understand that the fight might be rough, but I want to, let me, let me remind you of who you are. You need some people in your life that's going to remind you of who you are. You cannot just be hanging with anybody in this season. Some of you, the reason why you're going through these spiritual warfare, this spiritual warfare, these fights is because of who you are connected to. You're connected to the wrong people. And because of your association, the enemy is attacking them. And guess what? He's now attacking you because you, listen, because of who you associated with. Baby, you, listen, you don't have time to be playing church. It is time to be the church. David, I, I I could see David when they when they when they start telling David what all these, they, the person that was gonna kill Goliath gonna get. David say, "Huh? What you say now? I'm gonna get what?" Verse twenty six. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, "What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine? This Philistine, however you want to say it, and takes away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine?" That he should defy the armies of the living God. David looked at David and said, who this punk? Who this him? That's what you ought to be saying to the enemy. Who this him punk? Who this him? Who is that? Who is that trying to uh, tear up my marriage? Who is that trying to get me to fall up in depression again? Who is that? That's a, that, you're, listen, the enemy is a toothless punk. 
He's a toothless lion. All he got is a roar. He had to put his dentures in just, he, he toothless. All he does is roar. And we, oh, oh. We do just like these, these, these men that showed up for the battle. They ran when Goliath came. Baby, let me tell you something. When you have on the full arm of God, when God has put you in a season where he has been preparing you, which is what he did with David. Before, listen, David walked, listen, David was so bad. David had such a relationship with the Lord out in that field. You don't think David and the Lord talked? David had such a relationship with the Holy Ghost, with, with the Father in that field, that David walked up to the giant and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who, who is this? That's what you and I should be doing. When the enemy comes, we should be saying, who is this? Who is this coming to defy? Who is this? We should not be fleeing. We should be stepping up to him and telling him, you better get off of my child. And we had no problems with the interception to the day. Here come the enemy. Want to mess up the reception. You know why he want to mess up the reception? Because he don't want you to get this word. But I'm telling you what, you, you better stay right there until this word is finished. You are going to have, you have got to be prepared for the enemy because he is prepared for you. All that liar did was stood up and started talking junk. Let's, let's read. You don't believe me? Come on. He said, and the people answered him in his in this matter said, So it so shall it be done for the man who kills him. Now Elab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men. And Eliab's anger was aroused against David. So the brother, he done got mad at David because what David was saying. And you know, some people gonna get mad at you when you start talking to the enemy. When you listen, they're gonna get mad at you when you look the enemy in the face and you're not afraid. People gonna get mad. People gonna they're gonna talk about you. People, people, they're gonna be jealous of you. People gonna have an issue with you because you're not afraid. You're not afraid. You're not afraid. You're not afraid. Do you know that people get jealous with you because of your relationship with the Lord? They are not going to under, listen, let me tell you something. In this next season, God is going to show them who you are. They're not going to be able to handle who you are. You over here crying about the fact that you are in this him battle. You are crying about the fact that you're going through spiritual warfare, that God has isolated you. I mean, he has, listen, he don't remove everybody from around you just like he did David. He had David out there in that field by himself, teaching him. He was showing him some stuff. He was teaching him some stuff. Why? Because he said, listen, boy, not too long from now, you are going to face a Goliath. You are going to face the biggest demon, the biggest enemy that you have ever, you are going to face cancer, daughter. You are going to face a, a time where you're going to be saying, uh-uh, it's your husband and I want a divorce. You're going to face it. You're going to face a Goliath and you're going to have to take what I've shown you over here when I isolated you. See, you are upset because God has isolated you. He stripped you of some people. He's removed some people. He showed you some people wasn't for you. He showed you that there are some things and that there are some people that they are no longer with you. They're not for you in this season. He had to isolate you. I keep here. I had to isolate you. I had to isolate you. I had to isolate you. In the isolation, I was actually preparing you. I was pruning you. I was making you. I was molding you. I was doing something in you so that when you came to this season, you can look at Goliath and you can say, what is going to be my reward when I come up out of this thing? What is going to be my shame? God, I said, what is going to be my reward when I defeat this giant? When I defeat this cancer, when I defeat this depression, when I defeat this thing that's trying to come up against me, when I defeat, when I walk this thing out, I'm going to listen to me. You're going to have to put your chest out. You're going to listen. You're going to have to stand flat footed and you're going to have to look the enemy in the face like David did Goliath. And you're going to have to tell Goliath, who are you? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Don't you know that I am 
the righteousness of God. I am the daughter of the Most High. I am the son of the Most High. My God is with me. He is for me. He's told me that if he is with me, it don't matter who is against me. I'm not scared of no Goliath. As a matter of fact, I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you in the name of Jesus. I'm coming to you in the name of Yeshua. I'm coming to you in the name of Yahweh. I'm coming to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I'm going to knock you down. As a matter of fact, not only am I going to knock you down, but I'm going to take my sword that the Lord has told me that I need, to, I need to put with me every day that needs to be part of my artillery. That needs to be a part of my weaponry. I'm going to take that very sword and I'm going to chop your head off. You know what that meant when David chopped his head off? I ain't got time to go through the whole thing. You're going to have to go through it yourself. But he chopped his head off as a, listen, that was a sign to show them that I'm making this joker headless. That means he ain't going to be talking no more. Some of us need to tell the enemy, say one more thing to me. You just say one more thing. I double dog dare you to say one more thing to me and I'm going to chop your head off. Girl, don't you know that you got authority? God has given you authority to put the enemy me up under your feet. You're not going to be trampled on. You're not, listen, he's not going to do nothing to you. You're going to have to put, listen, you're going to have to get yourself together. You're going to have to get your weapons and you're going to have to go out there on the battlefield and you're going to have to talk back. That's what David did. David spoke to Goliath. Goliath was doing all that talking. David said, okay, you talking? Well, let me tell you what I got to say. Let me tell you what I, let me tell you what I got to say. I heard, I hear you. I hear you shooting your little facts out there. I hear you shooting your little stuff out there. Say, I know what you said about me. I know what you said about my family. I know what you said about my situation. I hear you. You be coming in my ear. Some of, some of you, he be coming up in your dreams. He's all up in your dreams. You trying to go to sleep. You trying to get some peace. And the enemy all up in your dream. He messing with you all up in your dream. God said, that's all right. Because let me tell you something. He got limited power. Don't you know that your father has all power? All power is in his hand. All power all power, a Sunday. All power is in His hand, and therefore, since you and I are made in the image and the likeness of Christ, that means we have that same power. Stop acting like you don't know who you are. You got to know who you are in this season. When you are in spiritual warfare, you got to know who and whose you are. See, David was able to talk to Goliath like that because he knew who God was and he knew who he was in God. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? Does the enemy have you fleeing because you don't know who you are? This is why you got to read the book. It's not only going to tell you who he is, but you, he's gonna tell, it's going to tell you who you are in him. This is why you have to read the book. Not listen to what the pastor say about the book. You got to read it for yourself. David said, <laughs> oh, his brother was upset with him. And he said, why you came down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? So now they want to talk about it. They want to laugh at him. Oh, you coming down here? You done left these, who you left the sheep with, David? You ain't got no business down here. You know that's how some people feel about you? You ain't got no business starting no business. You ain't got no business talking about you finna start a ministry. You, <clears throat> you ain't got no business thinking that you're an overcomer. You ain't got no business thinking that you're going to be great. You ain't got no business thinking you're going to be the first millionaire in your, in your family. You ain't got no business thinking that your marriage is going to survive after he cheated. You ain't got no business thinking that you're going to come up out of that sickness, that you're going to be here. You ain't got no business. Notice this is people. Let's keep reading. So I got to go. I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. So now they're trying to tell that we know you came down here to try to be nosy. That's what you came down here for. What you come down here? You came down here to try to be nosy. David said, What have I done now? Now what have what have I done now? Is there not a cause? Then he turned from there. He said, you know what? I'm not going to even, I'm not going to even dress y'all. Because you over there talking out the side of your, you talking out the side of your mouth. He, he turned from, from him, from the brother that had the problem with him. So you're going to have to turn from some people, baby, in this season. 
when they go to talking that foolishness, you're going to have to turn from them and you're going to have to be like, you know what? I'm not even about to entertain you. David did not even entertain the brother. The brother was over there in jealousy and anger, try, trying to, what you doing down here? You don't even know what you're doing. How you going to start a business? You don't even know what you're doing. How you, first of all, bye boo, bye, bye Felicia and bye Tyrone. I just heard that so clear. God said, that's not your husband and you need to leave him alone. I don't know who that's for. You need to tell Tyrone to go head on. That is not your husband. You have no business with him. You are in, you are in a spiritual battle because you are with this man. You better let them go. Okay, you done got your little word. Let me go ahead on him. It says, um, <clears throat> then he turned from him toward another and said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first one did. So all of them started having this problem with David because David was asking about Goliath. Now, when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul. So now they're going to go run tell Saul. You know how they do? They're going to run and go tell your pastor that you, that you got a ministry. Well, Pastor, you know she out there on Facebook in the mornings. Yeah, you know J.C. on Facebook in the morning. Pastor, you need to go see it. Ain't she out of order? Let me tell you something. God calls you to the ministry. God is the one that gave you these gifts. God is the one that has given you purpose should we go to our pastors yes but at the end of the day it's god who has called you to do what he has called you to do and you better do it i will say some other stuff about that but i'm not gonna do it I'm not going to do it today because I ain't got but 10 minutes. <clears throat> it says, y'all already know. Mm -hmm. Then David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight this Philistine. David said, why y'all over here doing all this talking? I'm going to go fight him. Because y'all scared, but I ain't. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth. And he, a man of war from his youth. But David, I got something to say about that. Can't, mm. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear, here we go. <clears throat> he used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out. Ooh, boy, I'm going to have to pick this up tomorrow. I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it rose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. Let me tell you something. I'm not afraid of this young little punk. You know what I've been over there doing? While y'all been look when went by while y'all been passing by me, thinking I ain't got nothing going on. God been over there preparing me. I'ma say this and I'm getting ready to go. We're gonna stop right here. <laughs> Let me write it down. We're gonna stop right here because I ain't gonna go no further than this. I already hear you, God. We're gonna stop right there at verse 35. We'll pick it up tomorrow. This is what I hear the Holy Spirit saying. They're laughing at you now, baby. Yeah, they don't think you're worth nothing. You know, I know they talks about me. Yeah, J. Cena, she be coming on now. She don't be having but about, you know, 10, 20 people. She go on that Facebook in the mornings. I don't even know what, what she talking about. Who, who, who told her? Who told her? Who gave her permission? Who gave her permission to go on now? And, and talking, talking to people about God. Who gave her permission? They talking about you too. 
Yeah, who who does she think she is? Who does he think he is? Oh, he thinks that just because now, you know, he he the right hand man to the prophet, that he all of that. Oh, he think he Elijah now. You know, he think he he got an Elijah anointing on him now. Look at him. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Who 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 do they think they are? David said, I was the one that was over there with the sheep. I was the one that God, God put me over here. He put me in this, God put me in this position. And while I was over here, I had to handle some things. Let me tell you this, baby, and I'm going to leave. Don't worry about what people are saying about you. They don't know the warfare that you have experienced in the secret place. They don't know the things that have come against you. They don't know the lions. They don't know the bears. They don't know the fights that you've had to fight. They don't know the prayers that you've prayed. They don't know the tears that you've cried. Baby, they don't know your story. Hashe <laughs> God. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. They don't know your story, boo. And you ain't got time to worry about the people that want to talk about you. I, I'm, I said, God, Jesus, why you gave me this word today? You ain't got time to be worrying about what they over there talking about. Honey, I mean, they looking at you. They want she look at her. She got this and she got this. Or who she thinks she is and this and that and the other. Baby, you better stay in the secret place because it's in that it's in the secret place where he is preparing you. See, they looking at you now and they talking about you now. But baby, one day the table's going to turn because he said the last, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Uh -huh. Yeah. You see, he is alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. So it may look Look like you ain't winning now, but baby, just keep on praying. Keep on pressing. Stay in that place. Stay in that place. Because see, when he gets ready, he will make something happen for you to come up out of that place into the forefront. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Say, you don't know who I am. <laughs> see, you think you know, but you don't know who I am. You don't know what I've been through. <laughs> you don't know what I've been through. <laughs> you don't, you don't know, you don't know the things that I have gone through <laughs> to get to where I am. Am. You see, the reason, uh-huh, the jail, God, the reason to Jesus, the reason that David was able to talk with much confidence, the reason that he was able to talk to them and to Goliath, which we will see soon, the way that he did was because of the time that he spent with the Father, because of the time that when God isolated him, that he was able to become who God called him to be. You better understand that while you are over here in the wilderness, while you have been set apart, why you have been isolated, why you can't hook up with anybody and anything and go anywhere. I know you get mad with God and you ask him, why can't I go to this? Why did not invite me to this? Why they didn't call my name? Why couldn't I do it, God? You, why you call her instead of me? Why are they going out to the battle and not me? God, why? Why am I not getting the preaching engagement? Why am I not being able to do the workshop? Why am I? God said, because I'm pruning you. I'm preparing you. I'm listen, I'm transforming you. I'm transitioning you from one thing to the another, from the next to the next level. I'm doing some stuff in you that you and listen, eyes have not seen, and neither have ears heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of listen, that man they don't they not shut that they not gonna understand. Baby, when he do it, you go listen, you gonna be like a billboard and they're gonna be like a stop sign. They talking about you now, but they ain't going to be talking for long. I believe that we are in a season where we are going to see God raise up those people that were over there in the field. They were over there in the field doing their assignment. I hear you, God. They were over there in the field doing what God called them to do. You're over there in the field do, minding your own business, doing what God has told you to do. Baby, you better stay. Listen, stay in the field. Stay over there in the field. Stay in the field. They ain't got to know what you're doing. They Listen, you stay over there. God says, I have seen your tears. I have heard your whines. And this Two shall pass. I am going to bring you from the back to the front. I Listen, I'm going to make your name great. I, they're going to know who you are. When it's all over, they're going to know who you are. You best believe it. They're going to know who you are.
Don't worry about what they're saying. Don't worry about what the people are saying. Don't worry about those that don't support you right now, baby. God is going to supply everything that you need when it is needed. Don't worry about it. I know you get upset because you're thinking, well, why don't they support me? Well, why? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You're going to be able to look at Goliath and you're going to say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Do you know who I am? You must be not, you must don't know about me. Oh, you, oh, you don't know who I am. Well, let me introduce myself. How are you going to introduce yourself when you come up out of this wilderness experience? How, who, who are you going to introduce yourself as? That's what you need to start practicing. Because I believe David was practicing this kind of talk. I believe he said it to the lion. I believe he said it to the bear. Who are you going to come up against the sheep? And I hear that even in the spirit even, even further. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, don't you dare try to come up against my sheep. I will, I will strike you down. You go and mess with one of my daughters. You go and mess with one of my sons. I will strike you down. Don't worry about it. Stay in your prayer closet. Don't worry about them. You keep doing your little lives. You keep making your little post. Keep writing the book. Somebody's writing a devotional. Don't stop. I don't care how much warfare come against you. Don't stop. Because God is pleased with your commitment. You have not been perfect. But you have been faithful. And we know that David was not a perfect man. But he was faithful to God. He was consistent with God. And that's why God said that he was a man after his own heart. Because God knew he could trust him. God knew that even when David messed up, David was coming back to him. God knew David. God knew him. And I'm telling you, somebody today, you're saying, oh, I done messed up. Oh, how can God use me now? God is saying, but I know your heart. Don't worry about it, baby girl. Come back. Come back. I'm waiting for you. Come back. I know what you have done. That's it. I know what you have sacrificed. I know what you have given up. I know what you have let go for me. And I am going to reward you. I'm going to reward you right in front of the people that was talking about you right in front of the people that did not believe in you i'm going to reward you says the lord i got your back i am going to cause you to win right in front of them i'm going to cause you to you're going to be they're going to be looking at you and you listen they're looking at me now and they're saying oh yeah 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 they won't like the video but they watch it baby they won't say nothing to you but they watching you baby they watching you you better believe they watching you they reading your post they gonna read your book they gonna get they ain't gonna go by but they gonna read somebody else's don't worry about it go and do your thing go and let the lord use you go and get what you got to get while you're in this while you're in this wilderness while you're going through this walk baby you better get what you got to get because baby where you getting ready to go to be big it's gonna blow your mind where god is taking you it's going to blow your mind you cannot let these be. I don't care if it's your family. Sometimes it's your own family that don't believe in you. It's your own family. Sometimes it's gonna be them friends that you thought you just knew you you just knew that they, you they was gonna have your back. It's gonna be them. It's gonna be them. The ones you gonna think, the ones you think. That's going to be with you. They are not. He's going to send you a whole nother group of people. And the ones you did not think. They're going to be the ones that's going to be riding with you. They're going to be your riders, baby. Don't worry about what the people are saying. You do what God has called you to do. When you do it on the low level. What God say about that? Since you've been faithful over a few, 
I make you rule over many. He said, since you took care of this so well, I'm going to bless you on a higher level. You ain't seen nothing yet. I, 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 I had to stay calm today because I got these babies coming in here. And they're coming in here in the, tomorrow and Thursday. So I got to be, I got to wrap it up, baby. You need to come back tomorrow because we're going to hit verses 30, 36 on down. Stay the course. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare give up. Look at the enemy and tell him, who are you? You must not know who I am. You better talk back to the enemy like David talked to Goliath. And let him know who you are. You are a child of the Most High. And if God be for you, it don't matter who is against you. No weapon that is formed. The weapon may form. He didn't say that it wouldn't form, but he did say it ain't going to prosper. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Listen, if you are in the Orlando area, you need to meet me this Saturday at the gathering from 10 to 12. All you have to do is register. There is no cost. All of the event information, location, and other pertinent information will be given to you once you register. Uh, my assistant, Shanti Mosley, she will be sending out that information on Friday evening. So you'll need to check your email. You need to be here. It's going down. We're going to war. We're going to war on Saturday. Amen. I love you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. May he be gracious to you. I pray that God will cover, keep, protect, preserve you and your family. And I pray that you understand that you have a, a Goliath. Listen, you have a Goliath slaying anointing on your life. You got a Goliath slaying anointing on your life, sis. You better look at him and say, who are you? If you don't get out of my face, get out of my family. Get out. You going down. <laughs> I didn't come to play. I came to win. You got to know today that there's a winner in you. You're prepared for this. He's prepared you for this. Now fight. Fight. Put on your armor and fight the enemy. Stop letting him come up and just recap. Fight him. Put him in his place and cut his head off. David went round with his head like you see it. The very thing that came up against me, look at it now. Oh, I got to go. Blessings to you. I'm trying to get it together because I got to go. I got to go get ready for these kids and I got to calm down. I'm telling you, I feel like running. I love you. I love you. I appreciate each and every one of you. Listen, you are a giant slayer that's all i need you to do is type that in the in the chat i am a giant slayer god said it's time to slay that goliath stop letting that goliath talk to you don't be afraid giants do fall amen i love y'all have an amazing day i'll see y'all right back here tomorrow 715, meet me right here. It's going down. Giant slayer. You slay that. You slay giants. You don't run from them. You slay them. Remember who you are. Remember who you are. You hear me? Remember who and whose you are.
in Jesus' name. I'll see you tomorrow.